At the Lausanne Congress, the first Lausanne Congress, 1974, Francis Schaeffer gave a talk, later published under the title, Two Contents, Two Realities. Let me quote uh, from what Schaeffer called the two contents. The first content is sound doctrine. Schaeffer said, Christianity is a specific body of truth. It is a system, and we must not be ashamed of the word system. There is truth, and we must hold that truth. The second content is honest answer to honest questions. Schaeffer said, Christianity is truth, truth that God has told us, and if it is truth, it can answer questions. Truth and answers. That's the focus of this presentation. Half a year ago, it was the 1st of April, a day when we, at least in Europe, have official permission to fool people. This year's best prank came, came from an online gaming store called GameStation. In the site's terms and conditions, which you have to confirm that you have read and understood before placing the order, they had buried an immortal soul close. It read like this. By placing an order via this website on the first day of the fourth month of the year 2010, Anu Domini, you agree to grant us a non-transferable option to claim for now and forevermore your immortal soul. Should we wish to exercise this option, you agree to surrender your immortal soul and any claim you may have on it within five working days of receiving written notification from GameStation. The company even included a hyperlinked option which said, click here to nullify your soul transfer, and they rewarded astute shoppers with a coupon worth five British pounds. But only 12% of uh, the buyers noticed this. 88% of the, that day's transaction included human souls, 7,500 human souls. We Europeans, it seems to me, have in a similar careless way sold our souls and dispersed our rich inheritance. Europe has become the prodigal son. Like Asia Minor and North Africa, one parts of the world with thriving churches, Europe has denied the gospel and replaced it with other convictions, preeminently secularism. I have four main points. The first is the European lesson. Of course, there is many different kinds of, of Europe, the Roman Catholic South, the uh, Greek Orthodox, East, the Protestant North, you have the divide between East and West and the former communist countries. But there is still enough things to bind us together to make it meaningful to talk of one continent, Europe. And in order to understand the dramatic change for the church in Europe, we need to understand some of the historical background. There is cause and effect. The secularization of Europe has not come just out of the blue. Simplifying to the extreme, there are two root systems of ideas in Europe, with both goes back to antiquity. Humanism, with its roots in Athens, and Christianity, with its roots in Jerusalem. Let's begin with Christianity. Christianity, starting with Jesus of Nazareth, where God is gloriously revealed, the belief in Jesus spread throughout the Roman Empire and became the dominant faith from the fourth century onward. And then the church grew, but gradually also much of the gospel was lost or at least confused with other ideas and rediscovered. And we had times of reformation and we had strong revivals. And 100 years ago, we had a seemingly strong church in Europe. 
And yet, at the beginning of this century, the Christian faith has, so to speak, lost in Europe. Why is that? Why with this history are we struggling on my continent? The answer is to a large degree to be found in the other root system of Europe, that is humanism. Putting man at the center of everything and making him the measure of all things. An idea that was promoted by Protagoras and other Greek philosophers. It was rediscovered during the Renaissance in the 15th century and became the central idea during the Enlightenment, during the Enlightenment in the 18th century and onwards. The Enlightenment was at the start mainly a perspective accepted by philosophers and artists, the intellectual elite of Europe. It affected science and academia, which at that time affected just a few or a small portion of the people. But gradually, the Enlightenment perspective has taken over much of our culture, and today, both science and academia affect everyone. And Europe has become a secular culture. One very interesting thing here is science. Of course, science, in one sense, has its roots amongst the Greek philosophers. But modern science, with its empirical investigation into the actual state of affairs, has mainly Christian roots. When modern science grew during the 15th century and onward, it had basically Christian motivation. We are called to understand God's world, to think God's thought after him. But as time went by and more and more of nature were understood, which of course is not the problem for Christianity, science was hijacked and turned against its mother. Uh, and today, it, it's often looked upon science as if it has established the Enlightenment perspective. The, res the resulting situation at the beginning of the 21st century is that Europe is a cut flower who has lost its root in the truth. Europe has become a deeply secular culture where God is absent in the public domain and where the underlying world worldview very often is naturalism. Please note that secularism in Europe is not the skepticism of a few individuals who challenge the norm. Rather, it has become the norm. It is viewed as a positive liberation from superstition and from religious power play, which held people in bondage in previous generation. Most importantly, secularism is not seen as a worldview in itself on the same level as Christianity and therefore a competitor to Christianity, but as the natural and neutral starting point which should be shared by all reasonable persons. And then, of course, after that, you are free to add certain subjective things like Jesus or Buddha or something else to your life. This is what philosopher Charles Taylor has called exclusive secularism. A secularism determined to exclude all transcendent reference points from cultural, social, and political life. The lesson for the global church to learn is this. Do not ignore the secular outlook at the stage when it only affects a small portion of the population, and everything still seems all right for the church. Today, secularism dominates science, academia, and media, which in so many ways influences the whole world. How could this happen? How could Enlightenment thinking take over in Europe? Part of the answer is the faulty responses given by the church. One response was compromise. Many Christian theologians and leaders felt compelled to adjust their theology to the Enlightenment philosophy. They seemed to think that the scientific method demanded them to accept Enlightenment, as if the scientific findings meant that God was out of the picture. So in order, to be seen as intellectually honest, they started to deny miracles and revelation and the supernatural. And this is, of course, the liberal theology that has intoxicated the European churches so deeply. 
An example, 100 years ago, one of the most influential thinkers was the German sociologist and theologian Ernst Troeltsch. He said this, we are no longer in the business of fixing permanent dogmas from an inspired Bible. Instead, we formulate teaching which express the essence of Christian piety. In other words, he goes not from theology to practice, but he goes from Christian piety and practice, and from that he formulates what is theology. By becoming infected with enlightenment thinking, the church has become her own grave digger, or to change the metaphor, the church has uh, been hijacked by secular philosophies and its offspring, liberal theology. The other response, the other faulty response was, with, was withdrawal. It came from more Bible-believing people who did not want to accept the enlightenment challenge. They wanted to hold on to the whole gospel, but they tried to do it mostly by withdrawal from culture, from academia and from science. This is the more pietistic and later uh, charismatic attitude. Don't misunderstand me. There's so much to welcome and admire in pietistic and charismatic theology. But there has been a dangerous weakness in, in its isolation from culture and in the neglect of the intellectual challenges. There has been too little teaching on the worldly level of Christianity. There has too often been a separation between mind and heart and between mind and the Holy Spirit. And the result is that the church has forfeited the intellectual challenge. Europe has a long history based on the Christian faith, but claiming it's not possi possible to believe that Christianity is true, Europe has turned away. Europe was first lost for the gospel in the areas of ideas. If Europe is going to be one for the gospel once again, it must be one also, not only, but also in the area of ideas, because that's the point of departure. 